another way goes like this. So at this sharp corner, we will have two tangent lines. And of course, those two tangent lines slope totally different. So which one? So, so that's why we say, OK, at the sharp corners, it's not differentiable. Even the function is continuous. And for 36, we say, OK, the function is not differentiable at negative 1 because the limit does not exist. The definition of differentiation is the limit at the point of the difference quotient. And also, this is sharp corner. So at those two points, the function is not differentiable. We talk about some basic differentiation rules. So this is the definition. This is the definition for derivatives. So derivative of a function at a certain point is the limit of the limit, basically the limit of the function at that point, right? So when we take a derivatives of a constant, derivative of a number is a zero because it's just we have y2 minus y1 are the same. So this is a constant function. Constant function, the y value are the same. So slope is zero. That's why derivative of constant function is zero. Derivative of x is just one. Derivative of x squared, two x. Derivative of x cubed is three x squared. This is a, by short, shortcut, we have a power rule. We have this power rule. Power rule is saying, when we take a derivative of a polynomial like, this n can be any, in, can be any real numbers. So we just multiply the n, so the exponent n becomes coefficient n, then subtract one from the exponents. So the degree of it reduces the one. If we go through the quotient rule, the definition of derivatives, it can be proved. Some examples. If the function is x raised by 6, derivative is 6x raised by 5. Take down 6 as a coefficient, subtract 1 from the exponent, that becomes 5. Derivative of x raised by 1,000 is just 1,000 times x raised by 999. Derivative of x t to the 4, which is 4t cubed. Derivative of r cubed. You see the notation, the d, d, r. So in this, the variable is r. You see this d, y, d, t. In this, the variable is t. So it's 3 r squared, so on and so forth. So derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. Try to memorize this. Try to do a couple of times to memorize this. Because later on, it's very useful. So derivative of 1 over x. So we take down 1 over negative 1 as coefficient, subtract 1 from exponent negative 1 becomes negative 2. That's why it's negative 1 over x squared. Did we also remember this? Derivative of square root of x is a 1 over 2 radical x. Right. That's from derivative of x raised by half. The square root of x is x raised by half. Take down half as coefficient, subtract 1 from a half, that's negative half. So that's why we get a 1 over derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x. Okay, Th this two is good to remember. Try to remember them because it will be very handy later on. So power rule, oh, let's try those two examples. Derivative of 1 over x squared. Right. We can write 1 over x squared as x raised by half, negative 2. So take down negative 2 as a coefficient, subtract 1 from negative 1, that's negative 2 over x cubed. You see the degree lower than 1. Derivative of x squared cubic root, it's just we can write it as x raised by 2 over 3. Take down 2 over 3, subtract 1 from 2 over 3, we get a 2 over 3. Well, this better write as a 2 over 
3 cubic root of x. You know what? It's difficult for me to write it. Let's see this example. This example is the function is x square root of x. Well, x square root of x, we can write it as x raised by 3 over 2. So take derivative of this, take down 3 over 2 as a coefficient, subtract 1 from 2, 3 over 2. So we get 3 over 2 x raised by half, or 3 over 2 square root of x. You see the degree lowered by 1. OK, so this example is saying, find the equation of the tangent line and the normal line to the curve. So this is a function, or sometimes we call function a curve. Sometimes the equation can be a curve, like a circle is a curve, but it's not a function. So illustrate by a graph in the curve. Let's see this. So we find the derivative right now. We have this point at point 0.11, one, one, and we can use slope formula. y minus 1 equals to 3 over 2. So the derivative at the point equals the slope of the tangent line. x minus 1 will simplify to be this. y equals to 3 over 2x minus half. So this is the tangent line equation. What about the normal line? The normal line is perpendicular to it, right? Your two lines perpendicular. The slope, multiplication of the slope is negative 1. So we just take a negative inverse of this slope. That's negative 2 over 3. So still the same point. So we just get a one, y minus 1 equals a negative 2 over 3 x minus 1. Simplify to be this. Okay, that's how we use the derivative at the point to be the slope of the tangent line. If a function has a factor, we can factor out to the differentiation. Let's say this case, we have a 3x raised by 4. We can just take out a 3 outside the differentiation. Differentiate x raised by 4, we get a 4x cubed. 4x cubed times 3, then we have 12x cubed. But this is true. but However, usually we don't do that. Usually when we take the derivative of this, we just multiply right away. We just multiply 3 with 4, we get 12. Then subtract 1 from 4, we get a cube, 12x cubed. Just do it with one step. Same thing here. So negative x, derivative is just negative 1. Okay. Derivative of summation of two functions is a summation of two derivatives. Same thing for subtraction. Let's see this. If we want to differentiate this polynomial, right, we just differentiate each term. But in real life, we don't have to write this step. All right? We just do mentally. We can do mentally. So take the derivative of this, we get a x raised by 7. Take the derivative of this, we do 12 times 5, we get 60, 60 x by 4. Take the derivative of this, we do negative 4 times 4, negative 16, x raised by cube, negative x, 16, x raised by cube. 10 times 3, 30, x squared, negative 6, negative 6, then derivative of 5 is 0. Okay, this example is saying find the points on the curve where the tangent line is horizontal. When tangent line is horizontal, the slope is zero, right? This means the slope, so f prime of x oops, equals to zero, right? Slope is zero. Tangent, horizontal, horizontal means slope zero. So the derivative is 0. So let's take a derivative. So dy dx, so take a derivative with each term. We get a 4x cubed minus 12x plus 0. Derivative of 4 is 0. So then we set this one to be 0. Then we said, OK, in the slope is 0. So we set this one to be 0. 
Right, cannot be vertical. Vertical is undefined, right? Because what's, what's a vertical line? What's the slope of vertical line? Undefined. Because all the x value the same. When we do slope, we have x2 minus x1 in the denominator. If the x value is the same, that would be 0. We don't divide by 0 in math. Okay, this equals 0, so we factor this. Then use 0 property. 0 property is saying 4x is 0. Four x equals zero, and x square minus three equals zero, or x square equals to three. The first one gives us x equals zero, this one, and the second one we square root, so we get x equals to plus minus square root of three. Right. So three solutions. If we graph this is a polynomial degree of 4. And the coefficient of x raised by 4, that's a leading term, is positive 1. So we get this W shape. W shape. W shape. So polynomial degree of 4 wiggles three times. 1, 2, 3. And because it's upward, it's W, so it has a 2 lower. We call this a local minimum and local maximum. Right. So at these three points, we see f prime equals 0. So that means here, so we have f prime of 0 equals to 0. And f prime of square root of plus 3 is 0. And also f prime of negative square root square root of three is zero. Okay. Horizontal line, the tangent line is horizontal here, so f prime of zero is zero. Horizontal line, slope is zero, f f negative square root of three is zero, f prime f prime of square root of 3 is 0. All right, because the derivative at this point for this function equals the slope of this tangent line. Okay. Sine and cosine functions. All right, so try to rem remember this. Derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of a cosine is a negative sine. And then we can take, okay, derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is a negative sine. So this example is saying, okay, find 27 is the derivative of cosine. So derivative, so, so f of x equals cosine. F prime, f prime of x equals to cosine is negative sine x. Then double prime is negative cosine x because the sine derivative of sine is cosine. Then derivative of cosine is negative sine, negative negative become positive. Right? We see when we do four times, we go back to the original function. So the fourth derivative is going back to the original function f. So we divide by we can divide 27 by 4. Then remainder is 3. Remainder 3. Like this. So f of 24 goes back to the original function. Right? Then what's remainder? Remainder is 3. So we go back to 1, 2, 3. Right? 1, 2, 3. So f, so 27 is derivative. Of, sin, of cosine x is a sine x. Because so this is a sine, cosine are periodic functions. Periodic means after a period, it go back to the original point. At a certain point, it go, the function value goes back to the original point.
Okay, so we use the derivatives to talk about rate of change. So let's see this example. The position of a particle is given by this equation. So the displacement function is t cubed minus 60 squared plus 90, right? Polynomial function, polynomial of degree three. Some questions here. Find the velocity, velocity at time t. So that is the derivative of f. So the first one is asking for f prime of t. Velocity, because velocity measures the rate of change. So that is the derivative. The second one, what is the velocity after two seconds, after four seconds? So this question is asking for f prime of two and f prime of four. So once we find once we find a derivative function, we can evaluate at two and at four. When is a particle at rest? So that means zero. F, because this is a displacement, the position. That means when does f of x equals to zero? D, when is a particle moving forward? That is in the positive direction. That means the derivative, the rate of change is positive. F prime of x is greater than zero. Draw a diagram to present the motion of the particles. That's to draw the graph of F prime. Oh, here's T. So let's change all the x to be T. So x here is the variable is T. So number so E is to draw the graph of f prime of x, f prime of t. So the graph of f prime of t. F, find the total distance traveled by the particle during the first five seconds. Well, that's easy. That, that part, we don't need derivatives, right? It's just f, f of 5, f of 5. G, find the acceleration at the time t. What's acceleration at the time t? After 4, after 4 seconds. So this acceleration is f double prime of t or t equals to 4 in this case. So first we need to find f double prime, then we evaluate at 4. Then graph the position, velocity, and acceleration function for 0 to 5, for t equals 0 to 5. Okay. So the first one, we find a velocity function, f prime of t, what is v of t equals to s prime of t or ds dt? t cubed is 3t squared. Negative 6t squared is negative 12t. 9t is 9, right? So this is a derivative function. Derivative is a function. Now b, we want to find at 2 seconds, at 4 seconds. At 2 seconds, we just evaluate t equals to 2. So then we get a negative 3. So the velocity is negative, less than 0. The velocity at 4, after 4, we just evaluate at 4. When we do that, we get 9 miles per second, positive. Then the slope, the particle is at the rest, is when no velocity equals 0. Oh, f prime. So that means, I read it wrong. That means no rate of change. That means the rate of change is 0 doesn't have any rate of change. So v of so v of t equals zero. What f prime of t equals zero. So just set this function, right? We just set this function to be zero. So three t squared minus twelve t plus nine equals zero. Then we solve this quadratic equation. We see every factor has a three in it. So we just factor out three. Then we use it we factor out this expression as t minus 1, t minus 3. Then we use a zero property, 
right? Three things multiply. We can divide by three on both sides. Then three disappear. Then let's say t minus one equal can be zero. T minus three can be zero. So I have these two solutions. So at time one and at time three, the velocity or the rate of change is zero. If you imagine we have this graph, we have this cubic graph because it's a polynomial of three degree, right? So I have a graph of we go twice. We go twice. We go twice. Think about it, it's a three. One, two, something like this. So, so we will have a minimum, local minimum, local maximum. All right, so we have a two. T equals one, and T equals one, T equals three. Oh, this is how they graphed it. What is this? Okay, anyway. Well, graph is like this, right? It's like this. Then we see at a one, we have this maximum. At a three, we have this minimum. Okay, then, right, if, if we want a graph, so this is a graph of the velocity function. You could just plug in some points. Then G, we want to find acceleration, which is a double prime of F. Well, A of T, acceleration, right? Acceleration. We just take a derivative of V. Derivative, so V is, 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. Take a derivative of this, we get an acceleration, or v prime, or f double prime. We get 6t minus 12. 6t minus 12, right? So after 4 seconds, we just evaluate t to be 4. So 6 times 4, 24 minus 12, that's 12. So 12 miles per second squared because it's acceleration, it's a V prime. All right, if we graph, so graph everything together, the acceleration is a linear function, and velocity is a quadratic function. So original function, this is S. So this is a cubic function, S. The velocity function is a quadratic function. It's a parabola. The acceleration is a linear function. So when we take a derivative of a function, right, each level of derivatives just lower the original function one degree. From cubic function, derivative is quadratic function. Derivative of a quadratic function is a linear function. So this is the example of applications also, is the cost of function. All right, so let's try, let's practice with this shorthand rule to find some derivatives. Let's do 31, 32, 's do this four 33 and 34 I will call people all right or maybe 35 also remember this means take a derivative at the level 99 all right so you divide by four you see the remainder so let's try these four five questions they'll call people to show
Right, try to finish five questions. Okay, I'll call people to show. Okay, I may not call your name right. So if I pronounce your name wrong, teach me how to pronounce your name right. Uh, uh, Malika, M-A-L-I-K-A. -A. Yes, it's Malika, that's right. Oh, okay, thank you Hi. very much. Can you show us 31? Yeah, okay, so we will take the derivative of each term. So x x to the power of four will be 4x3 mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then the derivative of negative 3x to the power of 3 will become negative 9x squared. Mm -hmm. the, derivative, the derivative of 6x will become 16. So the whole thing will be f prime of x equals 4x to the power of 3 minus 9x squared plus 16. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. Next one. Raphael. Yeah. Oh, would All you right. please go 32? Yeah. Okay. So we start out with uh, square root r plus cube root r. So we could convert each of those to their exponent form, which is r to the one half power plus r to the one third power. And then what we do, we bring down the exponent and make that a coefficient. So we do one half r to the power of negative one half because one half minus two over two, right? That's one is negative one half. And then we also do the same thing for the next. So that'll be one third r to the power of negative two over three. Hold on one second. The first yeah. one, right? So we bring down the half. Then what else? So we'll have half of r raised by r to the negative one half power. Oh, okay. R to the right square root of r on the bottom now. In the yeah. Number. Okay, great. Keep going. So, and we also do the same thing for the next term. Uh, so that would just be one over three times r to the negative two over three. Okay. This is difficult to write it. Let me see if I can write yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so. Let me write this with QP root R square. So that's a three index. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. That is three. Alexandra? Yes. Okay. Would you show us uh, 33, please? 33. Yeah. yeah. So you have GT, then you're given, which is equal to 2 cosine T minus 3 sine T. So what I did for the first derivative is I found that the derivative of cosine of T is negative sine of T. So that first term, the first derivative would be negative 2 sine T. And then for the second term, you have uh, 3 sine t, so I converted it to um, minus 3 cosine t. Okay, yes. So we started with, I was g prime of t equals to negative sine t minus 3 cosine t. Okay, great. Okay, any someone see this? Okay, this is uh Euradia Y U R I D I A Euradia. Okay, I don't see here. Katie. Katie. Oh, okay. Katie, can you show uh, 34?
Yes, the 34, please. Yes. Okay, I was a little confused on it, but um, I just did every variable. So I did one, one half and then the square root of t on the bottom. Okay. And then plus five cosine t. That's it, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, you would call that edge prime of t, right? Uh-huh. Right. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. Okay. Let me see. I'm sure I will pronounce this name wrong. wrong. It's a uh, Java. Okay. J-A-V-O-K-H-I-R. The Javok. G A V O K H I R. I see you on the list. Okay, hold on a second. I'm texting him. J A V O K H I R. To try thirty five. Okay, let's see. Interesting. This person. Okay, interesting. I guess he cannot hear me. Well, okay, Raphael, thank you for volunteer, but let me try. Let me let me see if I can find someone else. Because some people I don't I need to get to know everybody. So I'm trying here. Um Chloe. It's this Chloe, C-H-L-O-E. C-H-L-O-E. No, he's not here. He or she's not here. All right. The uh, this is a uh, Mokira M O K H I R A. M O K H I R A. Not here. Okay. Hillary. Hillary not here. Okay, Anna. And uh, not here. Victor. Hi, yes, yeah, so I asked on the chat um, because I 
Wasn't sure how to do 35. Is the answer cosine of x? 35, 35 is find the derivative of sine x, right? Uh, your, your answer is the cosine x? Let's see. So we do 99 divided by 4, right? 99 divided by 4, what's the remainder? Point seventy five. I think it's twenty four point seventy five, Professor. Right. So remainder is one, right? Hold on a second. Two nineteen. So I have. Uh, yeah, there's a remainder of three. They said. Um, remainder is a three. So remainder is three. Let's go to the. The periodic. So derivative of a sine is a cosine. So we have a cosine, right? Then cosine is a negative sine. Negative sine and then is a negative cosine. Then after negative cosine, we come, we go back to sine. So the remainder three. So what is it? What was that? I'm sorry. Would that be negative cosine x then? Right, so you, that's your answer, right? Yeah, that's George. That's probably what it is then, right? Right, that's right. Because this makes a, we start from sine. Sine, uh, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine, then come back to sine. All right, uh, let me see anybody's question I have here. Yeah. Oh, not 96 by 4. We divide 99 by 4 because that's raised by 99, not 96. Is D the derivative or variable? Oh, D is derivative. Remember we were talking about those signs, right? You know, we talk about all those different signs. We talk about dy, dx. Right. We basically we equal y and the f. Right. We could talk about df dx notation wise. In this case, this means a d derivative. Yeah, I see. I see. It's confusing. Okay. Think about f of x in this case equals the sine x. And the question is asking for f raised by ninety nine. The ninety ninth level of derivative. That's what it means. So this D means derivative derivative of sine x. Take a derivative of 99 times. The notation is a little bit confusing. All right, thank you guys. Is there a way to rewrite? Right, like I wrote here, right? If you think f of x equals sine x there, you just write f raised by 99 of x. Okay, great. Anybody else has any other questions? Okay, so Right, and it's DCIC, but if we divide 99 by 4, it's 24. Uh, well, we're looking for the remainder, right? If we do 0.74, we get 3, then remain, right, remainder 3. We just divide by, so 4 times 24 give us 80, 80, what? Or 96. So 4 times 24 give us 96. So 99 minus 96, the remainder is 3. You're right. Remainder is 3. Right? Okay. All right. What if the denominator or numerator are different for 35? Or oh, I guess this notation. Okay, those two... Uh, let me see if I can write here. Let's go back. So D99, 
and dx99, those two numbers have to be the same. It can never be different. Let's go back to the notation. The notation is kind of confusing. Let's go back to the original. So to the first way did we talk about derivatives. Remember the book lists a couple of notations. Right, right here. The easiest way is to, to put a prime, right? This is the first level derivative. Think about the f raised by one. Then the second level, we do f double prime, then f triple prime. Then to the fourth, to the first power, we write as f. Then little parentheses here, open parentheses, we'll put a four inside. Well, any other numbers? higher than, bigger than three. So is it, this is the most common notation. So f prime, f double prime, f triple prime, f four, five. So open parentheses with a number, close parentheses. This means we take a derivative four times. Then another way of writing it is this, like this, d dx, put the f of x on the side. You see that in the question we have d d dx sine x, right? So this sine x is f of x. So this notation is this one. The notation is this one. d dx f of x on the side. Sine x on this side. So this is the first level. So when we take this one, Again, if we want to take a derivative of this, so what do we do? We put we put this way. So there's another way of thinking about it is like this. I'm going to, so this is a function, right? Because the derivative is a function. I'm taking derivative with the sine x. That's following this notation. Then this is my first level of derivative. I want to take a derivative of this function. So I do d dx again. Right? I can keep doing this. I can keep doing this. Right. So then this is a second level derivative. I can keep doing, I do d dx again. So let's count how many d's we have. I have 1d, 2d. To simplify this notation, I can write a d squared then divide by how many dx? I have one dx, two dx, dx times dx, dx squared, dx squared. Then sine x. Right? Can you imagine we do 99 times? Right? We would have d raised by 99, dx raised by 99. Just a notation. And those top number and the bottom number have to be the same. Okay. Any other questions? Great questions. Okay, um, all right, so now, now, okay, we talk about summation of, the de de derivative of summation of two functions is the summation of two derivatives, but that rule does not work for product and quotient. Okay, product or quotient. So let's say product rule. But if we have, a, if the function is a multiplication of two functions, when we take a derivative, we have to take a derivative this way. Keep the first one, take a derivative of the second one, plus keep the second one, take the derivative of the first one. Or in another notation like this, so when we take derivative of fg, so I'm going 
to ignore the x, all right? So I'm putting the, as this, I put the x outside. Okay, so f times g, the derivative of f times g equals to f prime times g plus f times g prime. So we have to take a derivative alternatively, right? So if a function is a product of two functions, we take a derivative of the first one multiplied by the second, plus we keep the first one, take a derivative of the second one. Okay. So we call this a product root. We call this product root. Let's see an example. Let's see here. So a function y equals x squared sine x. So in this case, we can treat f of x equals to x squared. And uh, g of x equals to sine x, right? So let's think. Let's think before we do this. Let's think. How are we going to take the root of this? According to the rules we know, we only know power rule, right? We have we know power rule, and we know the derivative of sine x individually, but putting them together, product like this. We cannot deal only by power rule or by derivative of sine or cosine, right? So this is a product of two functions. So we have to see this as a product of two functions. We're treating x squared as f. We're treating sine x as g. So we see the function y is a product of f times g. So now when we take a derivative, take a derivative alternatively. So we say y prime or dy dx. You can use either one or y prime equals to f prime g plus f g prime. Okay. So in the beginning, you know, train your brain to go through this process. Once you get used to it, you can ignore this process. You can use the product rule right away. Okay, let's do that. So dy dx, we keep the first one because it's a summation, right? Summation is a commutative. It doesn't matter which one you do first. So keep the first one, take a derivative of the second one. That's cosine x. So we have x squared cosine x. Then keep the second one, take the derivative of the first one. Derivative of x squared is 2x. 2x times sine x, 2x sine x. And that's it. Okay, so this is called a product rule. Product rule requires us to be able to see a function is a product of two functions. And in each one, we may apply power rule, we may apply the rules for sine or cosine. Well, let's see example two. Example two, f of t is defined as square root of t times a plus b t. You, you know, remember that in this case, only t is variable. a and b are treating as some numbers. All right, a and b are some number, are numbers. Okay, so f of t, this is telling, this is a function of t, all right? Because f of t, so f is function in terms of t. So a and b here, we have to treat them as numbers. Okay, let's take a derivative. We can do two ways, right? We can do product rule, or we don't, we don't really need product rule. Let's try not using product rule for this one. 
This one we can write as equals to a square root of t plus bp square root of t, right? We can write it as this. We can write this function as this. a times square root of t and bt times square root of t. Then we can take a derivative of that because we know how to take a derivative of polynomials or polynomial like. Then we use power rule. Or we can use product rule. Use product rule we're treating the first one. We're treating the first one as a function, as one function. We're treating the inside parentheses as another function. Let's follow product rule. They, they will give us the same answer. Square root of t, keep square root t, take a derivative of inside the parentheses with a derivative of a, a is a number, which is a zero. Derivative of bt is just b. So the first term give us b times square root of t. Then keep the second term, take a derivative of square root of t. Square root of t is one half 1 over 2 square root t, square root t on the bottom now. Then multiply by a plus bt, right? This, this, this one. So 1 over 2 radical t, that's a derivative of square root t. Then multiply a plus bt, right? We can combine those two terms. If we combine those two terms, we get this, right? We multiply by 2 square root t for this. 2 square root t for this, then top we would have 2bt plus bt, get a 3bt, then plus a, divided by square root of 2 square root of t. If we do this way, we will get the same answer, right? Because a square root t, what do we get? We get a over 2 square root of t. bt square root t, we would get a bt over 2 square root of t. And 2 square root t is the common denominator. Combine those two, so we get a plus bt divided by 2 square root of t. Okay, for some questions, right, we can combine them to be one, to be polynomial-like function. So we can apply power rule right away. Or we can treat them as product of two functions. Oh, here, here shows that, right? So, yeah, so same answer. Okay, let's see this one. This one, we have if h of x equals h times g of x, and it's known that g of 3 equals 5, g prime of 3 equals 2, find h prime of 3. Right? This we just use product rule. So h prime of, h prime of x equals to take a derivative of x, take a derivative of this is, a, this is keeping the first one, take a derivative of the second one, then keeping the second one, take a derivative of the first one x times g prime of x, right, plus the derivative of x is just 1, 1 times g of x. Then h prime of 3, h prime of 3 equals to 3g prime of 3 plus g of 3. g of 3 is given as a 5, g prime of 3 is given as a 2, which is plug in. So get h prime of 3 equals 11. So we just use the product rule, find unknowns. Okay, usually I don't teach quotient rule, okay, but uh, I will talk about quotient rule. However, I think we do not need quotient rule, because with product rule, if we know how to use product rule, you know, we're good, because why? Let's see f of x equals to f divided by g of x, right? So I have this division. And we can always write as this, f times g inverse of x, right? The expression in the denominator, we can always write as a g raised by negative 1, something in the denominator raised by negative 1. Then we use the product rule from here, all right? So for a quotient, 
we can always write as a product. Then we just apply product rule. But uh, let's just talk about the quotient rule. So you don't really need to learn quotient rule, all right? Quotient rule is this. If we have f divided by g, right? If a function is a quotient of two functions, think about rational functions. All the rational functions, the numerator is polynomial, denominator is polynomial, so it's a quotient of polynomials. So what do we do? We take, we keep the first one, we take, we take a derivative of the first one, keep the second one, subtract, subtraction. This subtraction comes from this g raised by negative, right? Because g raised by negative, when we take a derivative of this, we get a negative one times the derivative. So g f prime subtract derivative of the second one times the first one, f g prime, then divided by g squared, right? This quotient rule comes exactly from product rule. If you want to remember, some people like to remember this, but you don't have to, okay? Once you know product rule, you know how to, take, how to find the derivative of a quotient. But if you want to remember, so this is the formula. It's called the quotient rule. This is just another way of writing it. All right? This is another way of writing it. This is saying, okay, take a derivative of a quotient of a function. You keep the second one. You take a derivative of the first one, multiply by the second one, subtract, take a derivative of the second one, multiply by the first one, then divide it by second one squared, divided by the denominator squared. No, the product rule is a summation. Okay, I have someone asking a question here. So essentially the product rule over the denominator squared. No, because uh, the product rule is adding. This is a summation. It's a summation, right? You see this negative sign is from here, from this negative raised by g raised by negative. Okay. Okay, let's see this example. So we have y equals to x rational function, right? Numerator is a polynomial function degree 2. Denominator is a polynomial degree 3. We can use quotient rule or we can use product rule. Well, let's try to use quotient rule. Quotient rule is saying take derivative of the top, then multiply by the bottom. Derivative of the top, multiply by the bottom. The root of the top is a 2x plus 1, multiply by the bottom. Subtract, take the root of the bottom, take the root of the bottom, multiply by the top. The root of the bottom is a 3x squared, multiply by the top. This is a subtraction, divided by bottom square. All right, simplify, simplify, we get this. You know, try use product rule for this, okay? Because it's so difficult for me to write it. But you try. Try to use product rule. Okay. To so use product rule, you rewrite this as a product. You write as synthesis x squared plus x minus 2 multiplied by x cubed plus 6 raised by negative 1. Okay. So try to use the product rule. You, so you write this quotient as a product with the denominator raised by negative 1. You can try that. You should get the same answer. Let's see example 5. So find the equation of a tangent line to the curve. Right, to the curve. At this point. At this point. Again, this will have two ways, right? You can use a power rule. Do, oh, this is dividing. Square root of x divided by 1 plus x squared. So we can use quotient rule, or we could use product rule. Use product rule, we can write this as square root of x times 1 plus x squared raised by negative 1. Right? Use that, so we'll find a y prime. Then at the point 1 comma half, we just evaluate at half at 1, 
Then when we evaluate at one, we get a derivative at the point is negative quarter. Then we just use a point one comma and a half, right? Y minus half equals a negative quarter times X minus one. Again, this is a slope formula, right? The graph is like this. So the function is square root of x divided by one plus x squared. The graph is, is this curve. At the point one comma half, this is the slope line, slope. This is a tangent line. So for this tangent line, we need to get a slope. And we need to get, we, we need a slope and we need a point. Then we can write the equation just like this. And the slope of this tangent equals to derivative of this curve at this point. Okay, derivative of a tangent. Derivative of tangent equals to secant squared, all right? Try to remember this. But this is to show why that's true. Tangent we can write as sine and cosine, right? Then we can use the quotient rule or product rule. Quotient rule is saying take the derivative of sine, right? It's cosine times the bottom times cosine, you get a cosine squared. Then take the derivative of the bottom. Cosine is a negative sine. Negative sine times sine, which is a negative sine. But quotient rule is subtraction. So minus negative, you get a plus plus sine squared, then divided by the bottom square, which is cos squared. Cosine squared plus sine squared, that's one. One over cos squared, one over cosine is a secant. So one over cosine squared is a secant squared, right? So for us, we just remember that derivative of a tangent is secant squared. All right, derivative of a sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is a negative sine. Derivative of a tangent is a secant squared. If you can remember more, this are uh, more. So de derivative of a sine is a cosine. Derivative of a cosine is a negative sine. Derivative of a tangent is a secant square. Derivative of a cotangent is a negative cosecant square. Derivative of a secant is a secant tangent. Derivative of a cosecant is a negative secant cotangent. Right. You may try to prove this, those two. Or maybe those three, right? If you, if you like. Because we know cosecant equals one over sine, right? You may, then you may be, you go from there to try to take, try to convince yourself this. Derivative of a secant is one over cosine, right? So just use those two, use this, we can prove those four. Okay, let's see example six. So f of x equals secant divided by one plus tangent. Let's try to use quotient root. Quotient root is saying take the derivative of the top, multiply by the bottom. Derivative of the top, multiply by the bottom. Subtract derivative of the bottom times the top. Then divide it by bottom square. So derivative of a secant equals secant tangent. Derivative of 1 plus tangent, derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of tangent is secant squared. So we simplify, we get secant times tangent minus 1 divided by 1 plus tangent squared. Right. You may also use product rule by rewrite the bottom as multiplication raised by negative 1. Okay, any questions? All right, let's try. Let's try some. Let's try number four. Let's try number six. Let's try number 10. Let's try number 14. Okay, let's try number 20. Let's try one, two, three, four, five.
maybe five more minutes.
Okay, uh, let's start. Uh, Karen? Karen? Yeah, can you show four? Oh, so your voice is very low. Okay, you said your F prime is is one half x to the power of negative one half sine x plus square root of x cosine x. Oh, I see. Right. For the end result, try to do it without the negative exponents. So basically, you get a 1 over 2 radical x on the bottom, 2 radical x in the denominator, right, sine x. So it's better to simplify the answer. So f prime of x equals to sine x over 2 square root of x plus square root of x cosine x, right? That's your answer, right? So try to simplify, okay? Because you have a square root of x the derivative is 1 over 2 radical x. But when you multiply by sine x, sine x goes to the numerator. So sine x divided by 2 square root of x plus derivative of sine x multiplied by square root of x. That's square root of x cosine x. Okay, try to, try to simplify after you take the derivative. All right, let's see. Um, Julie, Julie, Z U L E Y. Yes. Okay, can you show the next one? So, number 10? Yeah. Okay. So, for this one, we could just use a product rule. So, first, we have to identify what f of x is and what g of x is. So, I put f of x equal to sine theta, and then g of x would equal cos x. And so, what you would do is you would just multiply sine x times cos x pi by the derivative of cos x, cos x times sine x. So you would get cos x times cos x plus sine x times negative sine x if you take the derivative of everything. And then you get cos squared x minus sine squared x, which if you know about the um, properties, I think that's what it's called, I don't know, it's going to equal to cos 2x overall. Okay. So, so you separate we call sine theta equals to f, okay, f of x is sine, g of x is cosine. Yeah. And then take the derivative of uh, f, you get a cosine. So what do you get? You get a cos squared, right? No, it's just cos 2 of x. Oh, the derivative of everything is just cos 2 of x. Oh, I see. After you combine, right? Yeah, so after you, you yeah, after you do all the math, it's going to end up to cos 2x. Right, great. So that's uh, cosine two x. Good job. Okay, thank you. Let's see next one. Great. Um, a Noella N O I L A. Good morning, Professor. For the question that Zuli just said, wouldn't it be x instead of theta? Yeah, theta. But for me, it's difficult to use theta. So I use x. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand. Um, you want me to do number six? Yeah, please. Okay, so for this question, um, I used the product rule. And using the product rule, I found the derivative of the first impression the first expression and multiplied it by the original second um, expression. And um, you, 
so added um, the first impression times the derivative of the second impression expression, um, which resulted in three plus one over v squared minus two over v to the fourth power plus uh, eight over v to the fourth power minus two. And combining like terms, I got a result of one plus v squared plus six over x, uh, no, v to the fourth. Mm, okay, let's see. So, so I'm going to type yeah. minus two times whatever this is on the second term, then plus the first term times the derivative of second term, which is negative four, v raised by negative five, minus two, v raised by negative three. Then simplify from there, right? Okay, that's too much to write. I'm not going to write it. So yeah, I just wrote in my response so the others could check as well. Okay. All right. Let me see. Anyone has? Oh, it's one plus one over v squared plus six over v raised by four. I see. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, all right, let's see, next one. Next one, Victoria. Do you want me to do number 14? Uh, which number we're up to? Yeah, 14, right, please. Um, for number 14, instead of using the product rule, I use the quotient rule instead. Yeah. Um, okay, so for y prime, I did x plus 1 prime times x cubed plus x minus 2 minus x plus 1 times x cubed plus x minus 2 prime. All of that over x cubed plus x minus 2 squared. Then I simplified the top to, uh, I multiply all of them out to become x cubed plus x minus 2 minus 3x cubed minus x minus 3x squared minus 1, that over x cubed plus x minus 2 squared. And then when you simplify it, it should get negative 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 3 over x cubed minus x minus 2 squared. OK, that's a lot. OK, all right, thank you. Use quotient root. All right, um, so great. Thank you. Next one. Okay, Raymond. Raymond? Uh, yeah, Raymond is here. Didn't do it? Why you didn't do it? Uh, next one is 20, right? You either follow quotient rule or follow product rule, right? Okay, Riemann didn't do it. Okay, uh, Van, V-A-N. V A N I cannot hear you. Are you talking? Can you hear me now? Oh yes, I can hear you now. Oh, can you just twenty? Uh, excuse me? Yeah, number twenty, can you show us? Okay, um, so I did uh, the derivative of cosine x over 1 minus sine x plus cosine x over the derivative of 1 minus sine x. And that simplifies to negative sine x over 1 minus sine x plus cosine x over 1 plus cosine x. And um, Uh, 
um, I didn't really know what to do here. I didn't know I had to. Um... OK, so you're using code review, right? Yeah. OK, code review is saying, take the derivative of the top, which you said the negative sign x, then multiply by the bottom. Right, then subtract the top, multiply by the derivative of the bottom. What's the derivative of the bottom? Uh, one plus cosine x. Derivative of what's the derivative of one minus sine x? What's the derivative of one? Zero. Zero. What's the derivative of sine x? Cosine. Cosine. So what's the derivative of negative sine? Oh, negative cosine x, okay. Negative cosine, right? Then it's a simplified form there. So then you have a negative sign. Let me write another line. So negative sine x times 1, that's just negative sine. Then plus sine squared. Then plus cosine squared. Then divide by bottom square, right? Mm -hmm. Sine square plus cosine square equals to one. So y prime equals to one minus the sine x divided by the bottom square. Does this make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, just follow the rule. Okay. Okay. Okay, anybody has any questions? What is this? Was the simplified version of four? Okay. Okay, I'm going to leave some questions. So may so next time maybe we start with those questions. So so far we learned power rule and the derivative rules for trigonometry functions. So product rule and quotient rule. So practice those. Let's see, thirty six, right? Thirty six. You see product rule. You will find a pattern of that because you don't want to take it 35 times. You want to find a pattern of this. Maybe try this 39 to prove derivative of a cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Okay, maybe try 42. But questions with A, B, C for next time, you know, I want three people to present, all right? So for one person, it's too long. So this is like a six. All right, let's try 48. Okay, I think that's enough. All right, any questions?
what's the page number? The page number is 113. So 2.4, section 2.4, 113. Okay, thank you. Not, I don't want to leave you too too much. Um, but it's a weekend. Should I leave you more questions? Okay, also maybe try forty nine also. All right, forty nine is interesting. All right, that's for today. Okay, if no questions. Um, so today is Thursday. I see you next Monday. Thank you. Oh, Tuesday follow Monday schedule. You're right. Let me let me see. That's a good point. So Monday, let me see. Right. So next Monday is twenty eighth. Oh, time passed by so fast. So twenty eighth, according to Hunter's schedule, no class. So we'll meet on 29th. So 29th follow Monday's schedule. So try to have a calendar of Hunter with you. So we just follow the calendar. Thank you. So 29 at this time, you are right, Tuesday, next Tuesday. Kind of confusing. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, have a good weekend.